The Great Central had its beginnings as a much smaller railway, the Manchester, Sheffield and Lincolnshire, which was incorporated in 1846, as railways so often were in those days, from three yet smaller companies. And the MS and LR would have remained a modest east-west provincial line had it not been for Edward Watkin, who became its general manager in 1854 and chairman ten years later. Watkin was a man of great foresight, whose ambition was to link by rail the industrial centres of Manchester and Sheffield with the expanding markets of continental Europe. So Edward Watkin wanted to enjoy the gaming tables at Monte Carlo, and as part of that, and the fact that he was the chairman of other companies, the Great Central drove on beyond London via the Metropolitan, down through Whitechapel, down through New Cross and New Cross Gate. And because he was the chairman of the South Eastern Railway Company, he was able to build down to the south coast. And work did start on the Channel Tunnel, and they drove about half a mile under the cliffs at Shakespeare Cliff. Sir Edward Watkins' continental dream was, unfortunately, never realised, and was to remain a dream for many, many years. But, thanks to his foresight, the Great Central was left with a very fine main line indeed. Based on the initial ideas of Stevenson, who'd promoted and surveyed the line and suggested that a route should definitely run this way, over the years, because the Great Central was rather late to build the main line in the 1890s, most of the other routes weren't available, so they had to work down the route, and eventually, on Stevenson's suggestion, that was the way that the route worked. Now, it was rather, di rather difficult to build, uh, and there was not so many places that you could run the route down through. But the Great Centre was very clever and it, all the way from Bayton down to Creighton Road in Buckinghamshire, they built the line to such a standard that they didn't need to have any level crossings. They either went over or under all the existing uh, routes, both road and canal, and they were able to uh, run at quite a considerable speed. From 1923 until 1948, the Great Central, as part of the LNER, company operated successfully as a mainline railway company up until 1948 when the then British Railways was formed. The Great Central Railway was the last of Britain's main lines to be built. And with great foresight, the constructors built it to a larger loading gauge than all the rest because they foresaw the day that the railway might have to accommodate larger freight wagons from Europe via a channel tunnel. With somewhat indecent haste, the railway was closed in the mid-1960s. The official reason given by the British Railways Board and people like Beeching was it was a duplicate main line. But you could look at that and say, well, it may have duplicated another main line, but the line that it duplicated was also a duplicate. So the arguments used for closing the Great Central would equally apply to the Midland, certain sections of the London North West and the line out of Euston and other railway lines. Now, unfortunately, there isn't the evidence for that because all the paperwork does say it was a duplicate main line and you could use other routes. But the Midland main line, which was as run down in parts, has since been electrified uh, as part of the Bedford St Pancras route. Now you could equally have done that with the Great Central. I mean it had been famous for running over Woodhead. The electrics had run from Wath Yard uh, over, over the Woodhead tunnel route into Manchester and was very successful. So you could have continued with the electrification. So there we go. The Great Central Railway departed to that terminal in the sky. But hey, this is Great Britain, and we're made of stern stuff. And one thing we like to do is preserve things, even if it is as big as a mainline railway.